to this month's Creative Arts Collaboration. Today I am putting out a video for you under the hashtag thankful for art. As today is November 11th, I'm dedicating this art journal page to all the people who have fought for our country, whether they are lost and buried in foreign fields or whether they are home and doing just fine. This piece is dedicated to remembering all the hard work, all of the emotion, all the love, all the sacrifices that all of those people have made. I'm starting off this page with going with sort of um, an old-fashioned look. I'm dedicating this piece a lot to the poppy and what it symbolizes on an international level. And so I'm starting off with kind of an old age kind of look by using wrapping paper that has the pattern of burlap on it. So that's kind of an, an old world kind of uh, material. So I'm just going to collage things on here. And the reason that I'm putting a collage down first is because I want to add a level or a layer to my background. I want to get rid of that white space. I want to create a bit of a darker background in order to support what I'm going to be adding to it. And I did want to give it an, an old world feel and um, have it nice and nice and dark and kind of even the playing field. When you put colors onto a white background, those colors end up popping and going down exactly as you uh, see them. Whereas if you are going to add them onto a collage, especially because I'm going to be adding layers of napkins, you get to still keep or um, preserve some of the stuff that's on the bottom or on the bottom layer on the collage layer and I didn't want that layer to be white. So here I am adding an old piece of music and this piece of music is actually it's ukulele music but it's from the 1920s and that's what gives it that uh, brownish kind of paper color to it is that it is an old world paper. The reason that I am not putting my matte medium over the top of the pages and I'm just smoothing them out with my my little um, plastic piece there is because I want to make sure that I can um, have some absorption. I intend to spray this layer and I want the papers to absorb at different rates. Now I know that the wrapping paper, because it's a glossy finish, it's not going to absorb anything anyways. But I did want to make sure that the paper layer absorbed some of the color that I'm going to lay down. So once it's all on there, I do take my heat gun to it. I do warm it up and dry it out and make sure this layer is nice and dry. And I did cut a lot of that time out of here, but I did want to let you know that I did dry it for quite a lot of time to make sure that it was dry. Now this layer, you don't really see it in the the end part of the, the project. Once the project's all finished, you don't see a lot of this. But it is going to be a texture underneath everything. So I do add it anyways, even though I know it's mostly going to be hidden once all is said and done. And all I'm doing there is I'm taking a stencil and I'm taking some heavy golden gel and I'm going to put that through the stencil. I took the heat gun to it and dried it so that the top surface of it was quite dry and now I'm spraying on and I didn't read the names of these sprays until I was actually starting to plan my narration but it just turns out that this the yellow gold that I put on there is called California Poppy Gold and that dark golden orange is called Red Hot Poker, poker Orange. And they're both Lindy Stamp Gang sprays. Now, I find this interesting because of the dedication of this video to, to start off the project just randomly picking colors from the box in Poppy Gold and Red Hot Poker, you know, you know, kind of a... You know, that kind of symbolizes a bit of loss and death and all that stuff. That kind of is kind of hilarious to me. So once everything is is on there, I go and spray it or um, use my pipette, pipette to pick up any pools of color and get them moving around the page. And I use my heat gun in, 
in collaboration with that in order to get the spatter marks and all the different levels of colors and dry it as it spatters. And then I'm just taking a baby wipe on my finger and I'm going through and cleaning off all of the uh, resist pages or the resist parts from the, the, the gel. This napkin, I think it's absolutely fabulous. These poppies are just the most beautiful thing. I've used them in several pages and I just adore them. And so what I'm doing is I'm ripping each individual poppy out and then I'm going to separate it from two levels of the backing. Now here I am pulling apart this napkin. I took out almost <laughs> half an hour worth of footage because I, I tore up two of these napkins and it literally took me half an hour to separate all the layers out. The first layer came off quite quite easily but the second layer took quite a bit of work and so if you are finding that this is an extremely tedious process. Um, you're not the only one. <laughs> it, it did take a really long time and I did um, eliminate a lot of that footage. So once I've got my two napkins um, all torn up and ready to go, I pull my book back out again and make sure that it's all nice and dry, make sure I can move the page on the binding, and then I'm going to grab my matte gel this is a golden matte gel and then I'm just going to start adhering my stuff. Now I stop um, putting down a layer of glue first after this first flower and the reason that I did that is because Lindy Stamp Gang is a water soluble spray and I didn't want that stuff to move around so I just laid the napkin on top and allowed the saturation of the napkin to go or saturated the napkin enough for it to go all the way through to become cohesive to the page and I really tried hard not to smudge around with the with the oranges and yellows and golds that were on the background. Now I am taking a lot of the trim off and I'm trying to make it so that you can actually see some of these flowers in here and um, I'm just going to continue adding all the flowers that I had from those two napkins and fill them in all over the page. So what I'm trying to create is the field of poppy flowers so that you see them in the background, you see all different levels of the flowers, you see some in the foreground, some in the background, and they just kind of drift, you know, come all blend together in this field of red. And so that's what I was thinking about. I was thinking about the poem in Flanders Fields and the poppies growing row on row. The In Flanders Fields poem was actually written in May of 1915 by a Canadian soldier named John McRae, Lieutenant Colonel John McRae. And in um, the red field poppy is the international symbol of remembrance and it's become synonymous with great loss of life in war. But not only that, it has also become this gigantic fundraising venture that started in the early 20s. Now, the use of the flower as a symbol was actually the inspiration of an American woman named Moina Bell Mitchell, or Michael, and that was in 1918. And she wrote a poem all about that called We Shall Keep Faith, and it was in response to her reading the In Flanders Fields poem um, during one of her breaks sitting in a coffee room kind of thing. So she was the one who was inspired to wear poppies and she tried to get that through to the entire world. Now it wasn't until the efforts of um, a French woman named Anna Guerin, um, she was the one who adopted the use of handmade flowers as a fundraiser in the early 1920s and she traveled the world in order to get the world and the governments of the world to adopt that flower as well. Now originally she was using it to raise funds to repair France after World War I, but soon it became the international flower of remembrance due to the work of these two women. So even a hundred years after the In Flanders Fields poem was written, we have the use of the poppy continuing. 
Now I'm almost done layering all these flowers and as I'm putting on this last layer of flowers I'm thinking about which ones I want to pop off the page and so I'm making sure that I have some of the nice big lush flowers um, standing out and laying out flat um, right in the foreground. Now I'm adding the, some of this matte gel to the rest of the page and the reason that I'm doing that is I'm trying to um, put all of that water soluble Lindy stamp spray into a state of being stable and solid. So as I'm brushing this on, I'm brushing it on in a heavy layer so that my brush never actually touches the page. If the brush never touches the page, it can't move the product. So that's what I, I achieve by having a wet, very wet brush with the matte gel and going over it and keeping it nice and smooth. So I lost a lot of that shiny gold when I was um, covering it with the matte gel because it's a matte finish not a gloss finish so I lost all of the glitter and shine from the gold mica that was in the Lindy stamp spray so once I had this wet service surface which is a fixative I went in and I added a whole bunch of that uh, um, red hot poker orange back in there so that I could get the gold and I could get the color variation that I had originally wanted and that's when I went through and used my heat gun and spattered it all over it once again. Now in here, I am going through and I had to make the decision of using either a black or a white. And I wanted to outline the flowers and I wanted them to pop off the page. So I had to make, <clears throat> excuse me, I had to make a very distinct decision on do I want them to work with the background so that the flowers popped into the foreground and the background looked like a field of flowers behind it? Or did I want to ignore the background and make it so that the poppies were a focal point? And so what I decided was that the poppies were going to be a focal point and it didn't really matter what was in the background. It could be the music notes, it could be the burlap, it could be just the splashes of color. It didn't really matter. So I made sure that I left, I totally ignored the, for, the background. I picked out a bunch of poppies that I could pop off of the page because they were whole enough and, and um, clear enough that I could trace the image. And then I went around and I traced them with my black. Now, this is the wrong color to go with if I'm wanting to make a scene because when you're looking at flowers, the ones that are closest to you are often the lightest and as you get farther in the distance they become darker. So this is totally the opposite effect that I'm going for here. And that's why I said I had to choose between white and dark, white and black. If I had wanted this to be like a scene, I would have used the white in order to make the flowers lighter to me, be, you know, the closer to me be light and the flowers darker away from me or farther away from me would be darker. And that's why I say that I had to choose. So what I'm doing here is I went through and I traced the petals with my black Stabilo All pencil and it's a water soluble pencil and I traced the petals out and I traced the flowers out. I went for an odd number of flowers because that appeals to the eye and I, in order to activate the pencil, I get water, I make it wet all around the outside there along the pencil lines to activate it and then I go through and add a layer of water just on the inside of that like a nice wet sopping wet layer and then I touch, just touch, just very gently touch where I've activated the other line work and that allows the line work to become more blurry almost like a watercolor line. Now the reason that I, I took the Stabilo All Pencil is because I have more control in applying it, in originally applying it, and then I still get that beautiful washed out watercolor effect to allow the flowers to, to seem a little bit more lifelike. Now I will admit that I did go a little bit crazy when it comes to, sorry, I did go a little bit crazy when it comes down to um, how much black I applied to these flowers. And so what happened was I was creating something that was a little bit too dark and I had lost all of the red out of the shape and I was making black flowers instead of beautiful red ones. So once I go through and I get the shadows and everything to my liking and allow this, this to smudge a little bit, I realize, you know, I need to go back in there and I need to fix that red. Poppies are supposed to be 
this vibrant red lush kind of look to them. They're not supposed to be these faded black dismal things. They're, this, this isn't the symbol I was going for. So once I pick out my five flowers, three in the very, very front and two going a little bit farther away, I decide that I'm going to add some red back in. Now, I don't know if it's normal for poppies to have yellow centers, but because of the yellow centers in the back, I'm going to have to go in and add yellow to my, um, my flowers that I'm focusing on as well. So that's what I'm going to end up doing. Now, I'm already in a very wet medium. I'm not going to wait for things to dry. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm going to grab onto my red Stabilo All, and that's just not doing it for me. It's a little bit too orange. So I reach for my um, Neo Color 2 Water Soluble Crayon, and I grab Scarlet. Now, Scarlet is just what I'm looking for. The black Stabilo All is still just moist enough and just activated enough that it's blending in beautifully. And I'm starting with the flowers that are the oldest so that or that I started with because I can um, try and catch them before they're too wet. I'm going in with this brush on this flower because it's too wet and I want to absorb some of that black and move it around and make sure that it doesn't pool where I don't want it to pool. And then back to the red. Add some red in there. And I'm just bringing that all back out. Now it's not the same vibrant red of the flowers in the background. And that's what I wanted. I wanted this to be a different kind of red, a different kind of, of popping, because I want these to be my focal point. And as I go, I just keep adding layers of red and layers of black until I am happy with the effect that I've created. Now the nice thing about Neo Color 2s and the nice thing about Stabilo Alls is you can keep going darker and lighter and darker and lighter. You know, I could have added a little bit of gesso in there if I really wanted to go much significantly lighter. Um, that's the beauty of these Neo Colors 2s. They just blend so beautifully. So I just kind of keep going over each flower to make sure that it is what I want it to be. So I wanted to say too that um, the poppy flower wasn't used as a fundraiser until the, the early 1920s. And it was um, Anna Guerin of France and who adopted handmade paper flowers as a fundraiser. And the early funds from the fundraiser would go towards replacing um, or repairing France. So the flowers were made by the, like a women's coalition and then they were sold all over the world in order to make money to help farmers replace their fields, to take care of children who were, had become um, orphans and to feed women who had lost their husbands and to take care of families and to take care of the mental and emotional health of all of these people and the physical health of course too. So what I'm doing in there is I'm making the background come together with the foreground by spattering a little bit of that red. And I'm just taking the wet brush and going through and spattering it all over and then adding in wherever it needs to be added. So yeah, so the original funds were used to, rep you know, help out just France. And Anna Guerin traveled all over the world. She traveled, um, to America and America was raising funds to repair France and uh, America didn't actually, the United States didn't actually adopt the flower as their own and start raising funds for their own um, veterans until about 1923 where they adopted it as, formally adopted it as their own symbol of remembrance. And I believe in, in uh, the United States it's called Veterans Day. So here I am, I'm adding in that yellow in the center. Um, I was trying to add in just the golden yellow from the Neo Color 2 and just, there was so much black, it wouldn't let me. So I had to lighten the space first. So because each center was already wet, I went in with my orange Neo Color 2 to start in order to lighten it up. And then I could go in with the yellow on top and the yellow would actually show up in there and it once again it 
it blended out as it, it's kind of a watercolor look, right? So it blends out with the black in the end. And then I'm going to spatter some of that yellow all over just to change up that, just to add that in to the entire background to bring everything together. Now, once everything dries, those spatter marks aren't this huge in-your-face kind of thing. Even though they are red and bright yellow, um, you barely see them. You see them here and there occasionally, but it's not a big, huge thing. Same with the spatters of, of the Lindy Stamp Gang um, orange that I put on there. The gold does show up. It does shine on the page, but it's not an in-your-face kind of thing. It is kind of a um, just, oh, hey, look, something shiny. Oh, hey, look, there's something else that's shiny. But, but yeah. So the poppy, while adopted by the States in 1923, it was adopted by France in 1921. It was adopted by Canada, Britain, and Australia also in 1921. In 1922, it was adopted by New Zealand. And like I said before, in 1923, it was adopted by um, America. And there you have it, an international symbol of um, remembrance. And it, you know, over a hundred years past the writing date of In Flanders Fields, this poppy has, as a symbol, has still persevered. So it will be interesting to see how much longer that survives, as I've seen a lot of um, conversation and debate about um, the use of the poppy and, you know, how it could make money better in different ways and so on. So it is a 100 year tradition and I, I have to wonder if it's going to change based on the way that society is slowly changing. So it's not a bunch of women sitting around making, making paper flowers anymore. Um, now it is about a large scale fundraising and making sure the funds and enough funds go out to the veterans who need them and the families of veterans who need them. So I'm just going back in now that everything has dried, I'm going back in with my Stabilo all and I don't want to, I don't want to re go from the start and, you know, make a pool of, of black and, and make it nice and smudgy because I don't want it to overrun that red again. So I'm just taking my fine point water barrel pen, um, sorry, paintbrush, and I'm just going through and adding in the black lines. And just just bringing them back to life a little bit and making sure that they blend in nicely with that red. And that's just, when you, when you want more control, when you want to use a watercolor element but you want more control, you either have to go for a fine tipped brush or you need to go for a, a water soluble um, a water-soluble, what's it called, <laughs> material, tool, supply um, that that will meet your needs. I don't know that I would, I would do this with a watercolor palette just because I don't have the experience to do it, and I did want the fine control for this project. I love these little water barrel brushes because I just wipe them off and then they're clean and away I go. Can always pick them up again and keep going. Now, as I was looking at this I, after it dried, I did dry it with my heat gun for quite a while. After all the layers were dry, I was looking at this thinking, I want to put text in the background. So my options were that I have, I have a stamp that is French text. I don't know what it says, but it would put the graphic of French text in the background. And I, I liked the idea of that, but I didn't necessarily want the you know, I use that stamp for everything and that kind of diminished the importance of the text in the background. So what I did is I went and I found a copy of the In Flanders Field poem on the internet and I wrote out the verses one after the other, you know, thinking about the amount of space they took up behind the flowers to make sure the text was all evenly written and stuff. and. Come to think of it, you know, I, I didn't necessarily need to waste my time. I could have just added scribbles and put the graphic in, but it meant something to me to write out the lyrics of the song or the uh, words of the poem over and over again, all of them, and fitting them in behind the flowers. 
So all three verses of In Flanders Fields, I wrote three times in order to get from the top of the page to the bottom of the page. Now, this was a very big challenge for me, and it took me a very long time. I, I have sped it up five times fast for this, for the video, for the viewing portion. But um, this was very, very challenging for me. The first part of the challenge was that it was a very uneven surface, and my pen wasn't working the way I needed it to work. So I had to push down quite solidly on the page in order to get actual script to come out of this silly pen. No matter what pen I used, I, it was the same effect. So it didn't really matter about that. I didn't want to use the Stabilo pencil, which would have been much easier on my hand. Um, I wanted it to be the nice clear lines of the pen. But my hand went numb so often. <laughs> I had to pause about 15 times in order to get the text all the way to the bottom of the page. Now one of the major lines that is from this poem is um, the phrase, lest we forget. And that is on billboards all across Canada. It is on all kinds of promotional materials to support our veterans and all that stuff. So lest we forget is a real um, important phrase of remembering our veterans and all they've done for us and and to be thankful for everything that we have in Canada and North America because even to this day we lose our our military people just because World War one and World War two are in the past we still need to help out our current day veterans so or, you know, we still do have a military. And I do know several of our veterans who have needed mental help after coming home from their tours. I know of several who have need physical attention after coming home from their tours. And I know of several who, um, they the families may have gotten their soldier back, but that soldier's not who left, and they need some support as well. Emotional, mental, physical, all kinds of, of things. And... Um, not forgetting about our veterans and making sure that we give back to the people who keep our country safe is very, very important. So, lest we forget is going to be in very large words. And these stamps are from Recollections. These are one of my favorites. If you watch any of my videos, you will see these the stamp set a lot. And the reason that I used it for this page is because it kind of has a, um, a broken up brick kind of feeling to it. There's spaces in the letters that they're not solid letters. So then I'm going to take some of the words from the poem and I'm going to make them bigger as though they're in line with the uh, writing that I put on the bottom. So the first word from the poem I'm going to pull out is poppies. The second set of words I'm going to pull out is row on row right over here and these stamps are also from Recollections they are from a Michael set I use them quite a lot as well and they seem to be the right type of um, typeface in order to meet the needs of or meet the times so to speak and the last or no not the last but in the bottom here I wrote in Flanders Fields now I put the small letters above the bottom of the page and I sort of buried the words, the word in Flanders Fields, and that kind of gave the effect of headstones along the bottom of the page. Well, I feel it did. Maybe you don't, but I kind of was thinking about headstones sticking out of the ground and being slowly covered by, by the dust and dirt of time. And um, so I did overlap them over the edge of the page by about a third of each stamp. I almost spelled the word wrong there. I grabbed the E instead of the um, the D, and so I had to <laughs> make sure I left a space. Just barely caught that spelling error. And then I'm going to go back to the small typeface, and I'm going to write fields in Flanders Fields. <clears throat> so this whole project is dedicated to being thankful for our 
um, people who have fought for our country. And the way I'm going to finish this page off is I'm going to go back to my black Stabilo All pencil. I am going to put a border on this page and then I'm going to liquefy it or activate it. And while the page is wet, while the, the ink is wet, I am going to um, go through and put, go, put the pencil through it one more time just to make sure that I have a nice solid black border around the whole page. This last word here is loved because part of the poem says we loved and were loved. I really like how this page came out. I'm not usually going for red, but I really, really love how this page came out. Once again, thank you for joining me for this month's Creative Arts Collaboration. Under the hashtag thankful for art, we look forward to seeing you again next month. As I end this video, I'd like to take a moment to say thank you for joining me, to please subscribe, leave a comment, and um, give me a thumbs up if you like this video, and that I am now going to read the poems In Flanders Fields by Lieutenant Colonel John McRae from May of 1915, and the poem called We Shall Keep the Faith by Moina Bell Mitchell in 1918. I will follow this with a minute of silence in order to honor our lost soldiers wherever they may lie. Once again, thanks for watching. In Flanders fields the poppies blow, between the crosses row on row, that mark our place and in the sky, the larks still bravely singing fly, scarce heard amid the guns below. We are the dead, short days ago, we lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe, to you from falling hands we throw, the torch be yours to hold it high. If ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders fields. We shall keep the faith. O oh, you who sleep in Flanders fields, sleep sweet to rise anew. We caught the torch you threw, and holding high, we keep the faith with all who died. We cherish, too, the poppy red that grows on fields where valor led. It seems to signal to the skies that blood of heroes never dies but lends a luster to the red of the flower that blooms above the dead in Flanders fields. And now the torch and poppy red we wear in honor of our dead. Fear not yet that ye have died for naught. We'll teach the lesson that ye wrought in Flanders fields.